Following on from the drama of Saturday, Rovers are looking to win their fourth home game of the season on Tuesday night. Richie Welland's side came out the right side of a five-goal thriller at the Keepmote Stadium on Saturday, and now the task is to build on that. Cambridge have handled the step up in level well after winning promotion last season, but were beaten 4-1 at Shrewsbury last time out. It's yet another big home game for Rovers as they take on Cambridge United. Hello, welcome back. It's good to have you with us for the latest edition of the Inside Rovers pre-match show. Rovers taking on Cambridge United on Tuesday night. Joining me to look ahead to that one, editor of the Free Press, Liam Hoden, and Rovers defender and former Cambridge man, Kyle Noyle. Kyle, first of all, you must be buzzing to go up against your old side. Yeah, definitely looking forward to it. Thanks for having me, by the way. Uh, yeah, no, looking forward to it, um, especially after today's result as well. Just mm -hmm. um, carry some momentum into that game and push on from now. Yeah, you're well rested and, and ready to go again. Definitely, yeah. Before we get into it then, let's take a look at what's coming up on the show tonight. We get the best of the action from the win over Cheltenham. We'll hear from boss Richie Wellens on just how important Saturday's win was. We take a look at the EFL Kids Cup competition. And we have the latest away fans feature as I chat to Cambridge reporter Alex on their season so far. Plenty to go out then, let's get straight into it. Kyle, coming into this one, as I said earlier on, against your old club, a big game for both sides given both teams' results at the weekend. Yeah, no, definitely. One uh, obviously I've been looking forward to as I was there uh, previous seasons. But yeah, um, definitely looking forward to it, especially after today, today as well. So. Mm. Is it often, I suppose, when you're looking back, at when the fixtures first come out and you've just moved clubs, is the first one you look for when you go up against the, the team you was with last season? Yeah, I mean, you're just looking at the fixtures, the start of the season and whatnot and certain dates in the season. But obviously, my former club, I, I look for it. So, yeah. It's come around quite quickly as well, hasn't it? Is, is it a game where obviously you would imagine Cambridge won't bring too many fans up on a cold Tuesday night, but I suppose you'll be looking forward to seeing some familiar faces. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I still keep in touch with a couple of them and uh, just see how they're doing. But yeah, full focus going on to Tuesday and hopefully getting the three points. Liam, it's another game that Richie Wellens will have marked down as winnable in a, a crucial sort of run of fixtures, Charlton away at the weekend and then true after that. If Rovers can put together back-to-back -to -back home wins, it stands them in good stead. It'd be massive, be massive. And they are winnable. You've not got the, the thing of travelling. Obviously, we had that with, with Gillingham. It's an always difficult place to go. But yeah, a real chance to build a bit of momentum now. Richie Wellens mm -hmm. spoke about it after the game uh, against uh, Cheltenham, saying that they've not that momentum, there's not really been that opportunity due to the international breaks. Another one coming around thick and fast. Plenty of confidence from uh, this latest result and uh, take that into the next one. Of course, the result at Gillingham wasn't what anyone wanted, but to back that up with a win against Cheltenham, we'll take a look at the, the highlights shortly, but just to get that monkey off your back, if you like, and, and just have those three points. Rovers have, have taken 10 points at home this season. All of their points have come here. It's becoming something of a fortress. Of course, a couple of defeats in there as well, but the three wins have been crucial. I think impressive again with the fact that Rovers started really well after, you know, a lot of disappointment on Tuesday night at Gillingham, you know, given how the game panned out. But they started really well got on the front foot, stayed on the front foot as well, which were real positive. Obviously a bit nervy towards the end of the game, but yeah, that, that Richie Wellens has talked a lot about confidence and confidence remaining and, and says other people are the ones that question confidence. And I think you can see why he's highlighted that uh, with, with the performance on Saturday. Kyle, just on Cambridge, of course, they lost you in the summer, they lost Paul Mullin as well, who scored a lot of goals last season. What have you made to the way they've adapted to, to life in League One after losing their two star men, if you're looking at it on paper from last season? Yeah, no, they've definitely adapted well. Uh, their results to start off the season, um, they've come up against some decent sides and they've held, held their own. And uh, But for me, it's just full focus on what's going on here and and on our, our goal and our, to get three points, really. What's it like when you come up against a team that you know a few bodies? Does it give you that, I suppose it gives you that inside information, but then I suppose the manager and the players will have that inside information on you as well. So it's a bit of a balancing act. Yeah, no, definitely. Like knowing the way them players, um, they play, the things they do on the pitch. And obviously I'm going to have that advantage of knowing them as well. But like you say, they don't, they don't know about me. Hmm. After what turned out to be a nail-biting finale here on Saturday, then here are the best bits from that win over Cheltenham Town.
Liam, for 55 minutes of that game on Saturday, Rovers looked to be heading towards a comfortable victory, the, the most comfortable of the, the season so far. Fast forward 30 minutes or so, and it was a very, very tense climax to this game. It really was. You know, a few na nails been bitten towards the, the end of that one, but Rovers holding on. And yeah, they, if, thankfully doing so, you know, take, it will take a lot of confidence forward from that one. A really big win in what, had been kind of marked out as not not quite a must win, but getting up there for one as well. But some really good stuff in that opening hour. Some really good play. Should have probably had a few more goals. Rode the luck a little bit at times, but how much have they? How much luck have they had this season? Not many. Uh, not much at all. And then uh, yeah, battling uh, through to the end and, and and holding on for the for the three points. How important was seeing it out? Because if Cheltenham come back and it's a three-all draw, given the the disappointing nature of the result on Tuesday, you've then let a three-goal lead slip. It just means that confidence is at an all-time low, doesn't it? It does. I mean, the mood in here was very good for, for a long period. You'd imagine, particularly when Andy Williams went up for that overhead kick late on, the the, uh, the mood would have very changed dramatically uh, had that one gone in. But instead of holding on and, and something to take forward. Kyle is a right-back that loves getting forward and showing you what you can do in an attacking sense. What did you make to Ethan Galbraith's performance against yeah, he was, Cheltenham? Yeah, he was fantastic today. He definitely my man of match for that game. Uh, but I know Ethan, he's a top player and I know wherever you put him, he'll shine because that's that's the sort of player he is, player and person that he is. Mm. But yeah, he done well today and hopefully he can carry on. Not too well, so, <laughs> but you know. Were you heading and kicking every ball from the sidelines? I imagine it's not nice being in for every single game of the season and then taken out through suspension, of course, but then having to watch on as it's not a nice place to be, is it? Yeah, no, it's a different experience today. Uh, it's frustrating because you can't re you can't affect it from the side, but uh, yeah, just cheering the lads on, hoping that they got the three points today, which they did, and they all done well, so just kicking on from now. Yeah, Richie Wellens has spoken about the word momentum in recent weeks and he says the win on Saturday was a massive one. So we ain't, we ain't the worst team in this league, no chance, absolutely no. And you, you've seen that, but football, for all its technical, tactical, all of these aspects of it, football for me is a psychological and mental game where confidence plays a huge part. And if you keep getting punches off decision makings or whatever it may be, then and things go against you, then it can take an effect. We needed this, this is the first chance now we've got where We've won the game, the last the other two wins we've had, we've then not seen four or five players for an international break for, for eight or nine days and that momentum is just not kicked, but it's just not you know, boosted as much as what we could have. This is the first opportunity now, home game Tuesday, it's a really good chance to, to continue that momentum and build it. What does it do for you then, seeing those seven minutes out going into Tuesday against a team who've lost 4-1 today and, and perhaps won you? Yeah, no, it's a, that's irrelevant, it's a different game. Um, you know, we watch these... In a couple of games, they played differently today than what they have done in recent weeks. So, um, yeah, it's a totally different game. You, if, you, in, in this league, if you turn up, you do the basics right, first and foremost, it gives you an opportunity to get a result. Liam Ritchie Wellens relieved, I think, probably the key word after that game. As we touched on earlier on, that momentum is massive, isn't it? Rovers beat Morecambe, then had a long trip to Plymouth. When they beat MK Dons here, then had an international break. They haven't quite had that ability to build on, on victories here. No, they certainly haven't, and uh, we know full well how frustrated Richie Wellens has been at that. It's it's kind of put up or shut up time now. This is your opportunity to get it. You've not had it before. Now go on and, and take it. But a game on Tuesday night that uh, Rovers can certainly win and and carry that momentum forward. The manager, I suppose, fooled a few people uh, before the game, which he does like to do, doesn't he? He likes to sort of make, keep people guessing, shall we say. Most people are expecting Joseph Oluwu to fill in for Kyle at right back. It's then Oluwu on the left. Galbraith on the right with Rowe in a more advanced role, of course, was, was substituted early on, Tommy Rowe, but it just shows that Rovers have got flexibility within the team for people to be able to fill in in different roles if needed. Yeah, and it was far from a panicky move because you, you, on Tuesday night you're thinking, well, what are they going to do? You know, obviously Kyle suspended for this for the game and uh, Charlie Seaman out injured, what are they going to do? But they've, they've gone with Ethan Galbraith at right back, but in a role that allows him to get forward and, and you know really pop up all over the pitch as he did. And you know, it just shows there's always there's always a backup plan, and uh, always a, a little bit, of a, you know, there's a, there's a bit of cleverness in there as well. To be able to, to grind a result out like we did, Kyle, as we said, it, it looked like it was going to be a comfortable victory for much of the game. But each of Rovers' victories here now have been by the odd goal, so they've shown that when they do get in front, there's that steely determination to see it out. Yeah, no, definitely, uh, it's something that's grown grown in the squad um, over the last few weeks, and it's something that I still think that we can do a lot better. But uh, we should just definitely take the positives from today 
and um, look to improve on the areas that we need to improve on. Of course, you at 24, 25 as well are seen as one of the most senior players in the squad. So it's a bit harsh on you at times, isn't it, to be expected to be the one leading the younger players around? Yeah, but that's something that I need to develop and, and grow into. And, and that's what happens as you get older in your career. And it's something that uh, I, look, I look to the older players, like you say, I'm one of the older ones, but look to the Tommy Rose and Tom Addison's in the squad and the way they lead and just try to put that into my own game and help the squad out as much as I can. I know you've been busy off the pitch as well. Let's take a little look at Kyle's trip to the Club Doncaster Foundation's EFL Kids Cup competition. Scoring all the goals. Me, me, and me. me. Kyo. Kyo. Six. Kyo. Thank you. Great to see everyone back outside after a long, um, obviously, COVID period, and uh, just seeing everyone back playing football, enjoying themselves. I'm kind of hoping that they've got the incentive to play in this. Uh, hopefully so, yeah, no, it's good to see I mean, growing up, everyone wants to play at Wembley and having that chance is amazing, so hopefully they can get there. Kyle, of course, the fans want to see you on the pitch, but away from it as well, there is often that uh, sort of thing to go out into the community, whether it's children, whether it's different people playing football. Is it nice to have a break from reality at times and, and get out to do those sort of things? No, definitely. I mean, when I was there, it, it reminded me of being at that age and kicking a ball around with your mates and just enjoying it, really. So, yeah, it's great to see the kids playing again, especially after COVID, where... Mm. It's been a long time, people have been indoors for a long time, so just to be out there in the community playing and yeah, it's great to see. Of course, a lot of the player visits we've had to do, as you touched on there, in the last 18 months have all been on Zoom and you don't really get the same feel for it, do you? So to be back in and around things must have been better for you. Yeah, no, definitely. That's, that's the way everyone wants it to be. You know? Of course, Liam, we've seen so many players in the past few years or so take that responsibility and, and Kyle, the latest one of a long line. Yeah, this club's always been really, really good at that uh, and brilliant. And it does make such a massive difference to, to, to young fans and things like that to get to meet, uh, you know, the heroes and uh, always a uh, really good sight to see. Josh Gelder from the foundation has been in the presence of royalty recently. Here he is picking up his UK Coaching Hero Award. Well, <clears throat> so obviously that, that's my day-to-day -day job. But through the pandemic, it just changed completely where most of what I was doing were online. We had to adapt and we had to move our lessons to online lessons as well as still going into the schools and delivering there. Did it give you that sense of purpose during the <laughs> pandemic as well, knowing that you were affecting so many people's lives in a positive way? Yeah, definitely. I think um, you don't, I don't see it when I'm in school day to day, but when it, during that time, you could see that you were, I could see that I'm making a difference. And same with the other coaches that were, some of the other coaches that were doing it as well. Because um, obviously the kids that are sat at home that, were, that couldn't go into the schools, they were missing out on their PE or their active learning time and stuff like that. So to be able to still give that to them, uh, it just, yeah, like it was just, it was quite rewarding to see it, their faces when they joined our calls, whether it were for the workout or the lessons or, um, we did a, we did like a holiday camp at one point and little, little bits like that. It was it was nice to see. I mean, I did a few Joe Wicks workouts during lockdown. Were you the foundation's very own Joe Wicks? Then is that how you were labelled? Yeah, well, I can't I can't even put myself near that name because Joe <laughs> Wicks is absolutely massive. But for some reason, when I collected my award, I actually they asked me a question and I compared myself. I called myself the B Tech Joe Wick. I probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> um, but it was, it was. I, I, I said that when I were doing it, like our the foundations or the B Tech Joe Wick, because mm. I were doing similar stuff. Obviously, not as on a, not on a bigger scale as that, um, and not as effective. But for the Donny, for the Doncaster community, um, it were it were pretty effective. And 
um, managed to work with quite a lot of quite a lot of children in the area. I think you were one of twenty five coaches recognised when you presented the yeah. by royalty as well. What was that like? Yeah, yeah. So there were I think there were like seventy five people that were up for the award, and then there were twenty five winners. Mm. But yeah, when we got there, I, I didn't know what to expect. I've never really been to accept an award or anything like that before. It was nice. Um, like welcome really well and then I didn't even realise this and then Princess Anne um, walked in and I was like, oh, they got, then they came and told us that she would present us the award and I was like oh wow <laughs> so that's like in the same day I got an award and like spoke and met royalty as well which is pretty nice Congratulations from everyone here Josh on your award now time to look at the away fans feature here's Cambridge reporter Alex chatting to me about their start to the season well, um, Cambridge have been very hit and miss this season and there are a lot of concerns from our point of view going into this game. For starters, with slow starters, in a lot of games so far, we've conceded in the opening five, ten minutes. We held on very well against Sheffield Wednesday last weekend, or in midweek, sorry. Uh, but other than that, we've been conceding within the opening ten minutes of games. Um, Cambridge and midweeks are always a different prospect to what you face with the Cambridge side over the weekend, mainly because there's not going to be any Wes Houlihan. He doesn't do midweek games, uh, which is a big miss for us, for sure. Um, so it, it's difficult to know what to expect, um, especially on Tuesday, where the squad is looking really thin after the weekend. Obviously, uh, Adam May picked up a red card in the game against Shrewsbury. We're going to be missing uh, Paul Digby, who picked up his fifth yellow, which is leaving us with two fit centre mids. And we usually play a 4-2-3-1 or uh, a 4-3-3. Mm. So it's going to be Jensen Weir, who's a young low knee, and Ben Warman, who's a very young um, academy graduate for us. Other than that, it's looking very thin. Mm. So it's always difficult to know what to expect. In positions where we're expected to lose, we're actually quite good. Um, but this is a tough ask. I know Doncaster as well. I haven't had a, a, an easy time so far this season, but obviously I know that uh, the result against Cheltenham was really good. Mm. So we're, we're going into this one maybe not too optimistic, but having not won a game for the last month, we know how important it is, I mean, for both sides, but also really for us now. Of course, it's easy to forget that a lot of promoted teams rely on that momentum to take them up. But when you lose two of your key players, you can't necessarily do that. How have you adapted, do you feel, to losing Noyle and Mullen in the way that you play? Um, <clears throat> well, for starters, obviously, with losing Paul Mullen, we, we didn't necessarily replace him. We just changed the way that we played. We moved to the one up top. His strike partner last season, Joe Ironside, is our lone striker this year. And barring any injuries, will be starting tomorrow because he's been probably the best player we've had this year. Mm. Um, in, in terms of losing Noyle, that was a really big blow, especially to lose him on a free, because he, at least in League Two, was this swashbuckling right back, making runs, pinpoint crosses. He was such a threat. Um, <clears throat> and we've not really had a right back like that in, in recent years. We replaced him with George Williams, who is ex-Bristol Rovers and MK Dons, um, who I think had quite a slow start, mainly because people expected him to be the same and be making all these bombing runs. And he, he's not that. I mean, he played at centre-back for large parts of last season. But he's really grown into that role. He scored the opener against uh, Sheffield Wednesday midweek. He scored against Millwall in the Carabao Cup a few weeks ago. <clears throat> um, and he's done really well in that sense of trying to fill that void. He's had to really change his game as well. Um, so there has been a, a big gap to fill. He has been, um, it has been hard for us in that sense. Mm. But yeah, I, I don't really know how Noel's got on at Doncaster. I've heard some mixed things, but I obviously know if you're moving into a side maybe that has low confidence, especially in the back four. It's never an easy move for him as well. Yeah, he missed out on Saturday through suspension, but I'm sure he'll be chomping at the bit to to get back yeah. in on, on Tuesday night. Just just finally then, of course, it's a game in hand for both teams. You currently sit 
three points outside the relegation zone in 18th. Rovers are a couple of points inside of it, away from safety. So a, a big game, really, isn't it, for both teams for different reasons? Yeah, absolutely. We don't want to get drawn into this relegation battle. Everyone predicted us to go down. And up until this point, we've made everyone eat their words because we've done so well. We've kept our distance. We have two games in hand because we have to go to Morecambe in midweek, which is a horrible trip to make on a Tuesday night. But, yeah, um, it is a really big game and it is going to be a lot of pressure on us because we know that we don't want to get sucked into that battle. Kyle, of course, this one coming up on, on Tuesday night, a massive game for both teams. As I said earlier on, Cambridge, not the best result at the weekend, but Rovers going into it off the back of three points. It would be a massive few days, wouldn't it, for, for you and the boys if you can make it back to back wins? Yeah, definitely. I think momentum's been mentioned a lot and it's something that we need to get that momentum back going for us. And um, yeah, definitely going into that game, hopefully build from today's result onto Tuesday, get a positive result and then keep building from there. Of course, away form hasn't been the best, but if you can keep picking up wins at home, does that then give you more of a chance of winning on the road, if you know what I mean? Yeah, no, definitely. We need to make this place a fortress. I mean, like you said, our points have come from home. We need to pick up on our away performances and results. But um, yeah, the more wins you get at home, the more the confidence builds. And then going into them away games, it gives you, gives you a boost. The key is, though, Liam, not to solely rely on home wins isn't it because when they don't start to come you've got to be able to go away to Charlton next week to crew on the Tuesday night after and pick up results as well you're not going to get far if you're winning one then losing a couple and having to wait for the next home game to come yeah and that's that, that momentum word again uh, coming in that one that, that, there's been a lot of talk about pressure and, and pressure on this run of games that, that, that have been more winnable obviously it were more it were a difficult start to that run uh, down at Gillingham but picking up that three points on Saturday allows that momentum to build it takes the you can only imagine had Rovers failed to win on Saturday what kind of pressure would be on them in that game on Tuesday night that that's now taken off the pressure to win still there not quite as much and that will only happen away from home as well the more Rovers are winning here and I said to Richie Wellens earlier on that although Rovers don't want to be anywhere near where they are right now but psychologically what can it do to be lifted off the bottom of the table for the first time in what feels like forever. It's only one place, but it is one place, and that's all that matters. Well, for a long time, you, you go into games and be decent performances, just like at Gillingham, that performance in the first half, and not come away with nothing, and then you're still at the foot, foot of the table. Another week goes by, you're still at the foot of the table. That's massive. Rovers have been down there for quite a long time in this season. Moving off of there is, is huge, and it suggests that they're on the upward curve. Mm. Kyle, Rome wasn't built in a day, was it? So how much is that uh, a nice thing for the lads to look at? You look, you probably watch the EFL show tonight, enjoy watching the highlights, at, well, maybe the first 54, 55 minutes, but then you're happy, aren't you? You get up on Monday, you go to work, ready to build on what's been done on Saturday. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you've got to take each game as it comes and like you say, just keep building on uh, positive performances and also positive results, but the result is what gives you the boost, you know what I mean? And knowing that fixtures are coming up against the likes of Cambridge, Charlton are still down there, albeit with a good result on Saturday. Crew as well, who are now bottom of the table. It just gives you that urge, doesn't it? And you think, well, if we could pick three or four wins up in a row here, we could be all of a sudden in a completely different position. Yeah, no, definitely. I agree with that. But like I said, you just got to take each game, each opposition as it comes. I won't push you for a definitive score prediction on Tuesday night coming up against your old club, but how do you see the game going and where can Rovers win it? Um, I just see a win for Rovers, really. Um, I see a positive performance and just building on what, what we see today. And um, like I said, doing the, taking the positives from today's game, putting them into that game and improving on the little areas that we can. Liam? Go on then, give us a score prediction. I'm going to go for 2-0, a, a welcome clean sheet with Kyle back in the team. <laughs> <laughs> Liam, Kyle, thank you for your company tonight. Cheers. Thank you at home for watching on as well. Get down to the Keepmoat Stadium on Tuesday night, the second home game in a matter of three days, as Rovers take on Cambridge United.